Hi everyone and welcome back to Grey's Anatomy Post-Op. I'm your host, Gordon James. Today we meet the people who have to find real answers to questions like, is toxic blood really a thing? And how can a man possibly be pregnant? We'll get those answers and more from today's guests, executive producers and medical geniuses, Dr. Zoanne Clack and Dr. Fred Einisman. Dr. Clack, Dr. Einisman, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Let's get a little background. How, what is your background, Zoanne, in um, medicine? My background is that I'm a trained emergency medicine physician. I had a double major in neurobiology, you know, like you do. Communication studies in neurobiology. So and you're then, feeding your creative and the mm -hmm. medical approach at the same I, time. I actually ah. put the two together, which was nice because I feel like if I had done straight science right off the bat, I wouldn't be a doctor today. And Dr. Fred, what was yours? I became a doctor because when I was five years old, I was sort of a wild boy and split my head open on a, uh, a bedpost. And the doctor in the ER, who was a very young intern, sewed up my head, with, forgot to put the anesthesia in. And I just um, gritted my teeth, and about halfway through, he realized it. He said, oh my god, you're so brave. You should grow up to be a doctor. Um, and so I did. But like Zoanne, so I, I went to medical school, but always sort of had a yearning. And so the other thing I decided to do was to get a, a film degree at USC. So Zoe and I are now both executive producers of the show, and we sort of make sure that all the medicine is as close to real as possible. One of the things that I am so happy to have you on set with us today for is the fact that you always get, I call them the Grey's illiterate people, who come up to you on the street and say that they don't think that would happen in real life. They don't, but that is your job. It's not just us. I mean, we're both trained in emergency medicine, but the show has so many doctors and so many surgeons, so we rely on experts. And you always call them up, and it's my favorite story, because you call them up and you go, we're doing this story and this and this is going to happen. They go, that would never happen. And, then, and you say, well, you know, maybe it'll happen once in a million. And you can literally hear the switch in their head. And by the end of the conversation, they are so into the story. They go, so when is this going to be on? Because this is a really interesting case. I'd love mm -hmm. to hear this. And you know they've bought in. Even though we do this sort of rare cases, we try and get the facts right. So when I sit there and I go like, what are we going to do? And yet every week someone comes, how about this? And you go, oh, that would be great. And we get to put on our writer hats. And that's the fun part of this, that you get to be both. Megan may have a chromosomal condition that causes her to not feel any pain when she's injured. It would explain why she gets hurt so often. So, a man pregnant. Yeah. Is that a thing? What went into that? That was really fun. Um, that was one of the moments when I was really trying to make it work. And what I eventually found is that we could do a teratoma, which is basically a little tumor that has little pieces of like teeth and hair and nails. You okay? You look a little green. One of the hormones that it secretes is beta HCG, which is the thing that comes up positive on a pregnancy test when you test it. So it, when I found that, done. <laughs> okay, we have this case, we know exactly how this is gonna work out. And what about toxic blood? Does this mean that I have to worry if somebody's taking herbal supplements that if they scrape their knee, I'm gonna die? Get the hell out of there! She's awake, Mark, she's awake and open on the table. I need to know her weight so I can dose her with the propofol. She looks about 60 kilos. It's okay. You're okay. It's okay. Got it. It was a case where this woman, when they drew her blood or opened her up, it was just like everybody just passed out. And literally nobody knew why. And so no, nobody really, really knew, but people are still very interested in what happened. And it is still kind of a medical mystery. And what about the woman who could hear everything happening inside her body? Oh my God, Haley? That's lorazepam in there. Do it. I swear to God, I'll do it. No, baby, please don't. You don't believe me. Nobody does. So no, I swear to God, I'll stab myself. Haley, trust me. I can help you. I'm not crazy. I know. I, I believe you. That was fascinating. So it's a real thing. Oh, for sure. As a matter of fact, it's such a real thing that we got a letter sometime after it aired from a mother who had been having a lot of problems with her child. They had been 
kind of shuffled from doctor to doctor. And once they heard about superior canal dehiscence syndrome or something like that, they took them to an ENT to ask specifically to test for this. And that's what they had. What the hell did you do to her? I just diagnosed her. So wow. that was a definite win. So Dr. Nicole Herman, played by the fabulous Gina Davis, had an inoperable brain tumor. How'd you deal with that? It's one of the most complicated neurosurgical cases I've ever read about. This is a massive grade four astrocytoma. I want you to take a look at it. I was just watching it again last night, and it's really technologically amazing to watch that episode. It is alive, and we don't like to think of it that way, but it's nested in the womb of a human brain, feeding on its host, growing and fighting for life almost like a fetus. Because it's so intricate, and as a doctor, I got all choked up because it's an episode about fighting death. Right. And in the end, if you keep your patient alive and you put off death for a while, then you've won. And it was, it was a really, for me, a very touching and, and poignant episode as a doctor watching it. So then there's this, this little episode that I was in, you know, and it also happened to be directed by Denzel Washington as well, but that's Small not important. Episode. But I was in there and, I left Meredith Grey alone, and she got attacked by a patient. So it was your fault? It, everybody claims it's my fault, it but it's not fault. my fault. And then when Meredith recovers from that, she, her jaw is wired. <sighs> Good. Hey, what the hell are you doing? She couldn't breathe. Look at her. She's been stuck in this room in that bed for weeks. She can't move. She can't talk. But I'm her surgeon, though, right? You can't come in here and just take out her wire. She is my patient. I know what I am doing. You can rewire her jaw tomorrow morning, but right now she needed some air, so I got her some damn air. How did that come about? Well, that's one of my favorite ones, actually, because it's a great Shonda moment. Um, so we're talking about all the injuries, and I said, and she said, oh, you know, you have a broken jaw, and she gets smacked in the ear, and she said, what happened? I said, well, you know, sometimes you get barotrauma, you can't hear. And she goes, and could she not talk? And then within an hour, they had broken the basic th thing, and it was done. And I got the script, and I went, oh my god, this works. And I watched it last night, and it's remarkable and touching. I just want you, just want you to know that I'm sorry. It's my favorite episode because we got Meredith to give all these emotions without ever saying a word. It's a great episode. It's a really great episode. So now we're on the 300th episode. Did you expect it to get the 300 or? I didn't expect to make it past season three. <laughs> I was like, as I said, I was trying to open up my mm -hmm. mind for the first three seasons. And so it was a huge like learning curve. And so once I got past season three and I just kept going and kept, kept going, like I have been on the show for over a decade. I have lived my youth on the show. I have had my children on the show. You know, I just, I have, I'm exceptionally grateful. For me, it's surprising because I, I think I have a similar reaction to Zoe. I, I was a doctor and I, I was working full time in a major trauma center. So, mm -hmm. and like I said, I got a call to come and help and I thought it was for a couple of weeks. It's, it's years later. And it's something I never imagined would happen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm honored, I really am, to be part of the 300th. So there you have it. For all the naysayers, it could really happen, and it does really happen. It does. And as my character nurse Gregory would say, thank you, doctors. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, nurse. As always, go to the Love Grace Hub on ABC.com for more throwback clips, as well as previous episodes of Grey's Anatomy Post-Op. I'll be back next Wednesday with another installment on ABC.com. And since I'm a giver, here's an exclusive sneak peek at tomorrow's brand new episode of Grey's Anatomy, premiering 8, 7 Central, on ABC.
catch every season of Grey's Anatomy. Currently available on iTunes.